wish I had just a little more time. Morning, I'm morning. I got a sweet little dandelion. I got a little more brandy wine. Pleading, I'm pleading. Eileen, are you awake? So, this is it, huh? This is it, Joe. Um, Joseph. Uh, Joseph. place all right absolutely horrible yes sir are they all like this how could they be we cater to all sorts Asians Pakistanis what good would a beanbag chair be to a Pakistani what good is it for me do you know who I was back there never mind I've handled worse than this before at one time, I even owned a macrame wall hanging. Really? Macrame? Then this should be a snap. What's this? Security camera? Are they watching us? You know, I've never noticed that before. They could be watching. Still, it's very different than what I imagined. You know how they describe it back there? Describe what? This, uh, particular address. You don't believe all that nonsense now, do you? Those fools have obviously never paid us a visit. Of course, if they had. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> but where are all the torture devices? The what? You know, the racks, the white eye pokers, all that. You've got to be kidding. No, I'm not kidding, but... 
That's interesting. So, I noticed there's nothing I can see my reflection in. No mirrors, no windows. No television. Ah, something good has come out of this. But where's my goddamn toothbrush? And where's the toilet? Oh, that's a good one. Still holding on to the last vestige of your, uh, what shall I call it? Your human dignity. That's rich. <laughs> Don't fucking laugh at me. Can't you see I'm under a little pressure here? I apologize. But you have to understand. Every guest asks the same questions. Very silly questions if you ask me. Where's the torture chamber? What, no pits of fire? Everyone, the same thing. But they don't usually ask about the crapper until later, after they've gotten their nerve back. But why is that, my man? Why would you need to brush your teeth in hell? You're right. And why would I need to see myself in the mirror? It's just vanity. But what's with this awful painting? I can't believe I have to look at this thing forever. Okay, okay, I get it. I'm supposed to be uncomfortable. A man's final stinking resting place in what? He gets to stare at two goddamn owls. What a nightmare. That's the idea, isn't it? No. I suppose you can't talk about it much. Under orders from the big man. But don't think I don't know what's in store for me. Don't go bragging to somebody about how you really put one over on the guy in room 666. I know exactly what's going on. So, no mirrors, no toothbrush, no toilet, and no bed. I guess that means there's no sleep either. You know what they say, no rest for the wicked. Just what I thought. And I bet every time I feel a little drowsy, I go to lay down on the sofa, the very notion of sleep will fly away from me until I've sat up again over and over. You're a romantic, that's what you are. Shut the fuck up. I'm not gonna get all hysterical here. I can look at this thing dead on. I'm not being romantic. It's just that sleep was one of my favorite things to do. So it makes perfect sense that they would take it away from me, but it's disturbing. No sleep is like life without a break. Life? Joseph? Stop staring, for Christ's sake. No sleep, which means no dreams. No lying about in that nether state of consciousness just before you get up for another long day. No morning hard-ons? Does that mean there's no... You'll have plenty of time to experiment. So now, is it daytime? Well, the lights are on. So that means it's daytime. What about outside? Outside? Damn it, you know what I mean. On the other side of the wall here. On the other side of the wall, there is a hall. And at the end of the hallway? More rooms, more hallways, and stairs. Lots of stairs. There's also a water slide. A water slide? Well... It's boiling water, and no one who's ever taken it has ever returned. So I'd hazard a guess, it's not much fun. And beyond that? There is no beyond that. But you must get the day off sometimes. Where do you go? My uncle's place on the third floor. He used to be head valet here. Even hell has its nepotism. So where's the light switch? There isn't one. So what, I can't shut off the light? Only management can cut off the power. But I don't think they've ever done that on this floor. Here you can have all the electricity you want. Unlike, say, California. <laughs> so I have to live wide awake with the lights on forever. There you go again. 
with Liv. Don't start with me. So how about if I take this lamp here and uh, bust it over your uh, ever-staring, ever-smiling head? Would the light go out then? You wouldn't be able to. It's secured to the floor. You're right. Alrighty then. If you don't need me anymore, I'll just be going. Uh, no. Wait. This buzzer here, uh, if I push it, you'll come? Well, yes. In theory. It doesn't always work. Bad wiring. Doesn't always work, huh? Hmm. Interesting. But I wouldn't count on it working too much if I were you. It's capricious. Hmm. Now, I really must be going. I have a 130. But... Yes, Joseph? What's this for? That's Excalibur, Joseph. Opening letters. Do we get mail? Don't be silly. But then why? Doesn't matter. You can go. Oh, thank you, Mr. Joseph. You ring, sir. This is your room, ma'am. Do you have any questions? Surely there must be something. Where's the rack? Where are the brain-eating harpies? 
Or are you one of those? Oh, there must be some mistake. I belong in that other place. Well, there's no mistake. They don't make mistakes. So if you have any questions about your toothbrush, the painting over the fireplace, or the buzzer, the rugged journalist can tell you about as much as I can. He's quite the talker. Adieu. the ticket. Torture by separation. Well, it ain't gonna work, buddy, because I'm so over her. She was a tedious, neurotic mess. I won't miss her at all. Priceless. Who exactly do you think I am? You're not the torturer, are you? Hardly. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I ever heard. You thought I was on staff. Senior torturer supervisor or something? That idiot valet should have introduced us. I'm Joseph Garson. I'm, I was a journalist. I was, I was covering Kosovo. And you are? Journalist, huh? Figures. In need of stiff drink. Well, now that we've become acquainted, I wonder what it was about my appearance made you think I was your torturer. You look scared. Scared? But that's silly. Why would the torturer be scared? Believe me, I know torturers. I saw one every morning in the bathroom mirror. In the mirror? As you'll soon discover, there aren't any mirrors. In fact, there's nothing we can remotely see our reflections in. Very strange. Is that them? I suppose so. Unnerving, isn't it? Very. As you can see, I'm not the least bit scared. Not that this whole experience isn't a tad daunting. But I'm not scared. Whatever you say, Joseph. So, do you just hang around all the time or do you ever take a stroll outside? The door's locked. Just by luck. So I'm already boring my new guest, my new cellmate. Tisk tisk. Perhaps you'd like to roast marshmallows on the electric log? Look, sister, I'm not so happy about having a cellmate either. I'd rather have a little peace and quiet so I can get my head straight, make sense of all this shit. But here I am, saddled with you. So how about we try to be nice to each other? might make things a little more pleasant. Sorry, pleasant isn't my forte. Then I'll be pleasant for both of us. Please stop doing that. Stop doing what? Your mouth, it keeps twisting into this grotesque grimace. It's annoying. I'm sorry. I wasn't aware I was doing it. That's why I told you. There you did it again. Pull yourself together. Get some control of your face. God, I don't want to have to stare at your grody lips for all of eternity. It's like you're rubbing your fear all over me. Yeah, and what about you? You're not scared? The fuck would I be scared now? I should have been scared before, when there was a chance I could avoid this place. Good point. But I think it's still before. We haven't even got started on the suffering part yet. You could have fooled me. I wonder what's gonna happen. 
I don't know. Look up. Oh, don't look. There's just a bloody hole. Ugh. What? I don't even know you. I'm not the torturer, if that's what you thought. I didn't think you were. I thought you were... Is anybody else coming? This is it. Party of three. Non-smoking. Just the three of us? Well, where I come from, three makes a party. Where's the liquor? Where's the liquor? Do you even know where you are? Look, it's hard for me to take anything seriously the way this place is decorated. Hello, a bean bag. <laughs> and this picture? It's also... Okay. Hellish. It reminds me of New Year's at my Aunt Mary's. Total house of horrors. But, at least we all have our own seat. <laughs> you don't really expect me to sit in that bean bag, do you? I have a bad back. You can sit here if you like. The recliner. That's almost as bad as the bean bag. What the hell am I worrying about anyways? I'll stick to what's coming to me. I'll take the bean bag. Unless you wouldn't mind giving a young lady the couch. Hey, Peter Jennings. The lady's talking to you. You want my couch? Sure. Whatever. Hey. Thanks. Well, since it looks like we're stuck with each other, I suppose we better learn each other's names. I'm Yvonne Regal. Eileen Serrano. Very pleased to meet you. Joseph Garson. Ahem. Do you need me anymore? No, that's all right. I'll call you if I need you. Are they watching us? You sure are gorgeous, Yvonne. I'd bring you flowers if I could. Flowers? Flowers? God, I love, loved flowers. They'd get all wilty in here with this heat, though. Aren't you guys hot? Anyway, let's start. So, of course, you both are. A month ago. Last week. I'm like yesterday. Strange. I can see it in my head. The funeral's not quite over. The wind's up on Colma. What a shocker. There goes my sister's veil. My uncle's toupee. He's a member too, you know. My sister's trying her best to cry. Come on. Let's give it all you have, sister of mine. Uh, much better. One, two. Two tears for my lovely sister. There's Olivia. No tears at all. Who could blame her? It'd wreck her makeup, and you never know what young stud is among the stallions of the wake. Olivia's my best friend. Did you suffer much? I was only half conscious, mostly. What was it? I think it was the GHB. And now the funeral's over. There they go in their BMWs, Lexuses. So long, ta-ta. My husband actually stayed at home. He was always such a wimp. What about you? How'd you meet it? Gas oven. And you, Joe? Joseph. Seven rounds of an assault rifle in my back. Sorry, afraid I'm not much comfort to the dead. Please don't say dead. It's too harsh. Bad taste. Besides, it doesn't feel like we're dead. I feel more like we're, I don't know, absent. We're absentees. Where did you become absent, Joseph? I was covering Kosovo. I'm a journalist. I'm from San Francisco. Did you leave anybody behind? Were you married or something? Yeah, I'm married. In fact, my wife is waiting for me at the American Embassy. I can see her. She's come there every day for the past week, looking for me. They know what happened, but they won't tell her. She doesn't shed a tear. She never could. The sun is out in Kosovo, and look at her there. She's a black spot on the bombed-out sidewalk. 
What a fucking martyr. God. She got on my nerves. Please, Joseph. What? You're on my sofa. Well, excuse me. Have your goddamn sofa. I didn't mean anything by it. Sorry I disturbed you. I'm just trying to get my head straight. <laughs> Yuck it up, sister. You better do the same. Whatever. Everything is straight. It got straightened out all by itself. Really? It's that easy for you? Damn, it's hot in here. Do you mind if I take my shirt off? Yes, I'm... yes, I mind. You're getting pretty cozy for having just met. Well, all right. Anyway, when I was covering Indonesia, we used to walk around the office without any shirts on at all. Even Kosovo would get muggy. Like it is right now. It's noon. Tommy and the boys are sitting around that little cafe we used to go to. It's nighttime in San Francisco. My friend Olivia is taking her clothes off. She's just in from clubbing. And to think she was just at my funeral. How time flies back on Earth. Yeah. It's night. And my room is sealed off with that yellow police tape. It's empty, black, still. See? They're down to their undershirts. And they're drinking beers and ogling dark European girls over their cigars. I used to live among sweaty men who smoke cigars. Appetizing. You know, it really doesn't make much sense. Them putting us three together? No sense at all. I mean, I look at you two and think I have to spend forever. It's just, I thought I'd be surrounded by friends and family. That's the other place. A friend with a hole in his face. Charming. Even him. He was a great dancer. You know, swing dancing. He taught classes. Why do you think they stuck us through together? I'm sure it was just chance. They'd probably shell out rooms to the first who come. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because you guys are a riot. Chance. Like they'd leave anything to chance. But if that's what comforts you... Maybe we all cross paths at some point. I wouldn't have forgotten a girl like you. Maybe we have friends in common. Do you know Tom and Keith and Barry and those guys? Straight white men? Not likely. But everyone went to their parties. What did they do for work? Nothing really. But they sure could party. Truly a credit. I was a mechanic for UPS in San Francisco. I used to go to the end up to watch the girls dance. I see. I get it now. And you, Joseph. Did we ever meet? Not likely. I'm from L.A., but I haven't been stateside in years. Then you're right. It must be chance that brought us together. <laughs> there you go with chance again. Is it by chance that this room is a nightmare? Beanbag chair, plastic plant, and that painting? Chance and this heat? <sighs> no cigarettes? And the three least likely people to be caught together anywhere? No. I tell you. They thought this down to every detail. Nothing was left to chance. They designed this room for us. Please. Everything here is so hideous. Oh, do you think I lived in some bad 70s flop house? So it was all fixed up beforehand? Yes. And they put us together deliberately. They're expecting us to explode. I hate it when people expect something from me. It makes me want to do the opposite. Do it if you can. You don't know what they expect. Oh, great. So something's coming to me from you two. Something nasty, I bet. Look, why have they put us together? Come on, out with it. You've been tossing hints like hand grenades all day. I don't know, man. I'm just as much in the dark as you guys. Sure. Whatever. We'll figure it out.
Yeah, like we even have the guts. The guts for what? Yvonne. What? What'd you do to get in here? That's just it. I haven't done a thing. I mean, I'm starting to think there was some mistake. <laughs> Don't smile at me like that, Eileen. I mean, think of all the people who become absentees every day. Thousands, millions. They're probably sorted out by overworked administrative assistants who are both stupid and vindictive. They're bound to make mistakes sometimes. Stop smiling. Say something, Joseph. If they screwed up my case number, maybe they screwed up yours. Anyway, isn't it better to think we got here by mistake? <laughs> this is your rationalization. This is why you're here. You're really a saint, and this is all a big mistake. With all the knowledge and power of billions of diabolical minds from throughout the ages, you think they made some mistake. Look, I've got nothing to hide. I lost my parents when I was a kid. We were very poor. I had to raise my brother by myself. So when a rich friend of the family asked me to marry him, I selflessly said yes, to save both me and my brother. My brother was delicate, kind of sickly. And the man didn't turn out to be that bad. I mean, he was old enough to be my father. But for three years, we had a happy life. Then, almost two years ago, I met a man I fell in love with. I mean, really fell in love with. I mean, lightning struck. He asked me to run away with him, and I refused. I couldn't leave my husband or my brother. Then, I was out clubbing one night, and I guess I took too much GHB, and I died. That's it. End of story. Maybe it was wrong to marry the old guy, or wrong to take the drugs, but I don't think it was so bad a sin I should end up here. It's not enough to end up here, and neither is standing up for your principles. Of course not. Nobody could blame a guy for that. I mean, I reported for the Christian Science Monitor, for Christ's sake. Then when the rebels in Kosovo were getting quashed, I decided to join them. Shit, Hemingway did it. Then they shoot me. The rebels I was trying to help shot me. Ingrates. I was just trying to help. You're a hero. Oh, sure. A hero. I bet that's the whole story from both of you. What about your wife, Joseph? Hey, I rescued her from the gutter. See? Oh, I see all right. Why all the make-believe? We all know we fucked up. We're all damned. Shut up. Yeah, see? Somehow, we're all three murderers and criminals. In case you haven't noticed, we're in hell, my pets. And like the valet said, they don't make mistakes in hell. Stop it. <laughs> You've gone to hell. Live with it. Shut up. Shut up. You're just as damned as I am, my little plaster saint. And that goes for your friend, the passionate and heroic journalist, too. We had our fun, and we rolled over a few people to have it. Now we're fucked. Jesus Christ, shut up. Well, well. If it didn't make sense before, it certainly does now. Do you ever get tired of talking? Do you ever get it? It's so simple. Even a simp like you could figure it out. Simple. Simpering. Simpleton. There are no physical torturers here. No one's gonna join us. This is it. We're the torturers. Very uncomfortable. They've downsized hell. It's self-serve now. What are you talking about? It's easy. You're my torturer, he's my torturer, and he's yours, and I'm his, and so on and so forth. I still say it's all bullshit. I'm not gonna play this game, whether it's theirs or yours. I'm not gonna be anybody's torturer. It's easy. Each of us keeps to themselves and takes no notice of the others. You stay there, and you there. No one talks, not one word. It shouldn't be difficult. We got plenty to think about. Plenty of shit that we piled up while we were alive. I can sit 10,000 years and keep to myself and figure it out. I don't want to be quiet. You must. It's the only way we're going to get through this. Just stay in your seat and don't talk. None of us. Can we agree on that? Sure. All right.
fine. Then goodbye. Hold me for a second, Eileen. I feel strange. Sick. I get that way sometimes. Sometimes, if I can't see myself, I start to feel like I don't exist and it makes me nauseous. <laughs> Actually, I was trying to forget I existed. I always bank on the notion there'd be nothingness after we go. Pointed I blow it. I have mirrors all over my apartment, everywhere. I can see them now, but they don't see me, no reflection. I can see my entire apartment. I used to watch myself as I drift through it. I'd watch myself talk, and I'd see how others saw me. It'd keep me happy. I'd get physically ill if I went too long without a mirror. Are you sure my lips are all right, Eileen? I can't live without a mirror. I'll go crazy. I'll be your mirror. Turn around, sit closer. But, nor him. But you said we were going to hurt each other. Do I look like I'm gonna hurt you? It's hard to tell. It's probably the other way around. Still, if I'm gonna be tortured, it may as well be by someone as pretty as you. All right, sit up. Closer. All right. Now, what do you see? I can see myself. But I'm so tiny, I can't make anything out. I can see you. Every inch. I'll be as candid as any mirror not ask away. Come on, Joseph. You are sure we're not bothering you? He's not even there. Don't pay any attention to him. It's just you and me. Now, ask away. Well, are my lips all right? Mm -hmm. They're a little smudgy. I thought so. Fortunately, no one is around to care. Let me try again. Mm, that's good. Try to follow the line of... Here, let me guide your hand. Oh, that's much better. As good as when I came in? Better. Crueler. Your mouth is quite diabolical. Nice. But it looks good, right? <laughs> it's driving me crazy not being able to see. You're sure it's all right, Eileen? Call me Lena. You're sure it's all right? Yeah, you're the bomb. How can I trust that your taste is like my taste? I feel sick. My taste is whatever you want it to be, my dear. Come on now, sit up. Smile. I don't know. I'm not so bad, am I? 
better than any old mirror, anyway. I don't know. You sort of scare me. No, no, that came out wrong. It's just, I know my own reflection so well. It is a comfort to me. Your smile isn't my smile. Now, when I smile, the only reflection I see is the one in your pupils. And it seems to sink down somewhere. Dark. Look, we're gonna be here for a long time. We may as well get familiar with each other. Look, I don't have a lot of female friends. You mean you don't know a lot of dykes? What's that on your chin? On my chin? Is that a zit? Is it? God damn it! No, no, no. No, it's nothing. My mother used to say, if you set out a mirror, you could catch birds. Well, I'm that mirror, and you can't resist. But what if the mirror started lying? What if the mirror was always lying? What if I shut my eyes? All that foxy you would be wasted on these atrocious walls. Or him. But don't you worry. I can't take my eyes off you. You don't have to worry about that. You mean you really think I'm pretty? I told you, you're a fox. But I want him to think I'm a fox too. Christ, because he's a man. You win, Peter Jennings. Look at her, you bastard. Don't pretend you don't hear me. You heard every last fucking word we said. I haven't heard a word of your ridiculous conversation, but I could hear the voices. I even tried sticking my fingers in my ears, but the annoying, resonant quality of your voices still managed to thud in my head. Why can't you two leave me in peace? I'm not interested. Yeah, maybe not in me, but what about Sugar Butt over here? Doesn't she arouse you at all? I know your game, breeder. Act all coy and then reel her in. Look, I just want you to leave me alone. My boys in Kosovo were talking about me at the cafe, and I want to hear. I have no interest in your so-called sugar butt here. Thanks. I didn't mean that in a bad way. Dick. <laughs> Look, let's just review a moment here. I just asked you not to talk to me indefinitely. So don't get all pissy because I'm pissy. Blame her! She started it. I just wanted a mirror so I could fix my makeup, and Eileen gets all weird on me. Whatever. You've been trying to get his attention the whole time. So what if I have? You're both impossible. Can't you see? This is leading us right where they want. Please, for Christ's sake, keep your mouths shut. Now, let's just... Uh, sit quietly. Quietly. And stare at the floor and forget that the others are here. <laughs> forget that the others are here. <sighs> Laugh fucking riot, Joseph. I can feel your presence in my every pore. Your silence is deafening. Even if your jaw were wired shut, if I ripped your fucking tongue out, it wouldn't prevent you from being here. And can you stop that incessant thinking? I can hear it loud and clear. It's like a swarm of flies around my head. And you and your fucking beanbag making that fucking beanbag noise every time you move. And then there's Yvonne. You stole her from me. If we were alone, everything would be perfect. Take your hands away from your face. I'm not going to let you hide. You're just sitting here like some little yogi. And she's sitting over there, adjusting a little halter top and tossing her hair and maybe giving you a smile now and again. And you pretend you're oblivious. Well, no. I prefer to choose my hell. I prefer to look you in the eye and fight it out. Face to face. Have it your way, Eileen. It was bound to turn out this way. Look at them up there. They built this mad game, and they knew what they were doing. We are easy targets, and we're perfect together. I'd be at peace if I was in a room full of men 
Men know when to shut up. You find me attractive, Ms. Yvonne? Were you flirting with me, Ms. Yvonne? Don't touch me. <laughs> oh, now, now, darling. Don't be shy. You know, I used to be absolutely girl crazy and many were crazy about me. We might as well stop pretending. We, we've nothing to gain by being shy. Look. Let's cut the bullshit. It's just us three. And I don't think I mean like men. It's just a matter of time before you and I are naked and rutting like animals on the floor. Yeah. Don't be a pig. Like sweaty animals. Look, I tried, but you just wouldn't leave me alone. I could even hear good old Tommy spouting off at his table full of fawning journalists all in their tank tops at the cafe. I tried to listen, but it was nearly impossible. Things move at a real clip back there on Earth. You wouldn't leave me alone, and now Tommy's clammed up, and I have to listen to you two instead. You know, you and I could be shagging like there's no tomorrow. But I want to know a few things first. Don't tell him anything. None of us has come clean at all. We haven't shared one iota of truth. No, I think beautiful Yvonne here needs to share. Might save us a lot of trouble later. Come on, little girl. Spill it. As far as I'm concerned, they made some mistake. <laughs> On my way in, I asked the ballet why I was here, and he wouldn't tell me. Yeah, you know, they wouldn't tell me either. But I got a good notion. Maybe you don't want to go first. Very well. I'll start. I'm not a very good person. Ooh, shocker. Hush. You'll have your turn. I think it must be because of how I treated my wife. That's got to be it. She followed me around the globe for five years, and she suffered my crap the entire time. She's still suffering. And now I see her. She's sitting at the embassy with my belongings in her lap. A bloody coat with bullet holes. Brown rusty rings around each hole. My coat. And is she gonna shed a... Oh, no. Can't manage to. I used to come home, night after night, stinking of liquor and women. And my wife would wait up for me in whatever hotel room or villa we'd rented. And she never said a goddamn thing. Never cried, never started a fight. And it's funny, but I don't regret any of it. And now I'm paying for it. And I won't bitch about it. There she goes. She's walking up the street. They're about to have one of those Late summer Balkan drizzles. Cry, you little bitch. You are a professional victim. Why did you hurt her like that? It was too easy. I knew just the words to make her flinch. Hypersensitive. But never a reproach. I liked teasing her. She'd never really, really break. She was grateful to me. You see, I rescued her from a trailer trash destiny. Now she's stroking the coat. 
Her eyes are shut. And she's poking her fingers in the crusty bullet holes. And what are you thinking, honey? I still can't regret any of it. She worshipped me too much. Does this, any, does this any of this make sense? Not really. Nobody ever worshipped me. That's a good thing, really. This is all probably pretty vague to you ladies. Let me put it this way. I brought this mulatto whore home one night, and we did it in just about every position possible. And this girl, she was screaming like a banshee. Oh, oh, oh! My wife was upstairs the entire time. And in the morning, she got up and served us coffee and croissants. What a bastard. Yeah, I was indeed a bastard. Yes, a bastard. But of course, that's why I'm here. Your turn. You were a bastard, and I, well, I was what you might call a real cunt. A fucking cunt, and here I am, no surprise. That's all you have to say? I don't know. There was this affair with Louise. Lou, I like to call her. Tragic. Three corpses. Her boyfriend, then she and I. Clean sweep of it. All in that apartment. And it keeps coming back to me. The doors are locked, sealed off with that yellow police tape. Hold it. They're gonna rent it. They put a for rent sign in the window above the street. Very coveted vacancy in San Francisco, I assure you. Fucking priceless. Three deaths, huh? Trace, senor. One man, two women. Well, 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 Eileen. And this man, did he kill himself? Ha <laughs> ha. Roger? Not on your life. He was gutless. Shit, the way we treated him, he should have killed himself. <laughs> Actually, he got run over by a muni train. An almost comic ending for poor Roger. I lived with them. He was my cousin. Was Lou pretty? Pretty? Yeah. Of course. And I don't regret a goddamn thing either. Whatever. End of story. Don't leave us hanging, Eileen. Spill it. As time went by, he was annoying. He slurped when he drank, he stank a patchouli, shit like that. He was sort of, kind of pathetic, really. Overly sensitive, you know the type. Yeah, I know the type. I'm not one of them. We'll see about that. By the time I was through with Louise, she saw him through my eyes, and she left him. And we moved across town together. And? And then the Muni hit him. After that, I'd remind her daily. We killed him together, my dear. Very cruel I was. So am I. You're not cruel, you're... What? When I say I'm cruel, I mean I actually enjoy watching people suffer. <laughs> but even masochists need a break from the pain, the pleasure. And finally, one night, mm -hmm. She got out of bed, closed all the windows in the house, went into the kitchen, turned on the gas, crept back into bed. I'm sure she's in a room nearby, maybe even somewhere on this floor. <laughs> Private irony for the pleasure of our jailers. There you have it. 
Well, what a pretty little story that is. Pretty, pretty. It doesn't matter. And you, Yvonne, what did you do to get a season ticket to hell? I told you. I don't know. I've been trying to figure it out, but I just don't see it. Oh, sure. Let me help. The guy with the big hole in his face, he was... What are you talking about? Oh, please, the guy you mistook me for when you came in. Oh, him. Just a friend. Why does he frighten you? It's none of your business. He blew his head off over you. Shut up. Don't be ridiculous. Why are you afraid of him? He shot himself in the head, is that right? Shut up, you asshole. Stop kicking me. <laughs> <laughs> Out of here. Please, leave if you can. But, unfortunately, the door is locked. <laughs> <laughs> You two are both completely evil. Hurry up. Now come on, that guy who shot himself, you were his lover, weren't you? Of course she was, and he wanted her all to himself. But she was already married. Am I warm? He was a great swing dancer, but he didn't have a job or any help of a career. So he couldn't afford you? Mm -mm. No. But you, of course, had a loveless marriage to a money bags. And one day, the poor swing dancer begged you to run off with him, and you laughed in his face. <laughs> yeah, you laughed at him and he blew his head off. That's a great look on your face, Eileen. Did you used to look at Louise that way? <laughs> you two are so off base, it's ridiculous. He wanted to make a baby with me, if you must know. And you didn't want one. Hell no. But somehow, through all my precautions, I got knocked up anyways. So I told my rich, old, and quite naive husband that I was having a nervous breakdown. I needed some time away for a few months. I went to my girlfriend's in New York, and nobody but her and William, the swing dancer, knew any the wiser. The baby was a girl. William showed up at the hospital and saw the whole thing. He cried the entire time. Him showing up did not please me. Go on. My girlfriend lived in a high rise. The baby had an accident. Out the window. William walked in just as I did it. He saw the entire thing. The pale yellow blanket wisping away as I dropped her. Christ almighty. Then what happened? That's it. William didn't say word one to the police. Instead, he... <clears throat> it was silly, really. Nobody knew anything. Not the police, not money bags, not even my friend. You're a fucking monster. But you're hateful. Come on, come on. Third degree's over, chemist star. I'm not mad at you. What about me? You're not mad at me, are you? You're a different case altogether, Lena. Well, Joe, you really stripped us bare. Do you understand things any better now? Perhaps. Maybe. We should start supporting each other instead of just tearing each other down. Can keep your support. Look, Eileen, they've laid a pretty clever trap here. If you make a move, Yvonne and I feel the tug. Alone, none of us can save themselves. We're inextricably bound. 
So make a choice here. Are you listening to me? What is it? What's happening? They rented our apartment. The apartment's still furnished with our furniture and some man just sat on my bed. Make yourself at home, you chump. Oh, and look, his girlfriend. God, she's going in for the kill. Straight sex. I think she's gonna go down on him. Oh, stop it. Oh, come on, stop. She stopped. Good. Well, good. Blouse? Come on, now the bra. Oh, Jesus, they turned out the light. Just when it was getting good. Now they're talking dirty. I can hear the slappity slappity of their thighs. She's calling him. She's fucking around our bed and she's calling him daddy. Sick. Oh, and. Now it's. fading to black. No, nothing. Nothing. No more Earth. Guess that's it for my little psychic connection. My old life is gone. I feel so empty now. Now I'm really dead. Dead here with the two of you and nothing more. What was that about supporting each other? We need to support each other to defeat them at their little game. What can we do? All we have to do is try to be human with each other. Be human? It's out of the scope of my capabilities. I'm rotten to the core. Look, let's try anyway. It's no use, Joseph. I'm fresh out of empathy. I've got nothing to give, nothing to receive. All I'm good for is the burning. Such pretty hair. Louise had hair like that. You do realize, of course, that the fair Yvonne is destined to be your torturer. I guessed as much. Through her, they'll get you. I'm immune to her, of course. She's your personal trap. And they're watching you, us, to see if we fall in. I know. Don't you know you're a trap, too? Don't you think they know everything you're going to say before you say it? I bet they've laid a million tiny mines, little booby traps, that'll go off whenever any of us says or does anything. I don't care. I'm a trap, too. For you, for her. I'll have my little victory. Victory is too sweet. Victory's for the other place. We're all chasing each other around in a vicious circle. Forget about it, Eileen. Let it go. <laughs> Do I look like the sort of person who lets things go? Baby, I'm gonna burn. And it's gonna be forever. And I'm taking both of you with me. By the time I get done with Yvonne here, she'll see you through my eyes. Just like Louise saw my cousin Roger. Do you think it's going to do you any good trying to elicit my sympathy? <laughs> I can't even feel sorry for myself. I'm in up to my neck and shit, and if I'm going to sink, I'm taking both of you with me. If it suits our jailers, so much the better. Well, I can feel sorry for you. We've all let our guard down a little, and I can see into you a bit. Do you think I really want to hurt you? I don't regret anything I did. And even though I'm dried up, I can still feel pity for you, for all of us. Goddamn hands off me. I don't want your pity. Don't forget, you're a trap, too. All nicely said, so you better watch your ass. Sure, whatever you say. But if you stay out of my way with this sweet thing here, I'll go easier on you. Eileen, you are one piece of work. Mm-hmm. Whatever you say. Please, Joseph. What? 
forget about her. You can help me. I'll let you. Talk to Eileen. I'm officially out of the helping business. Please, Joseph. I don't want to be alone. Olivia's taken him to a rave. Taken who? Peter. Now they're dancing. Who's Peter? Oh, uh, just this young artist guy. He was terribly in love with me. He used to call me his muse. And now she's sinking her claws in him. Do you love him? They're sitting there. She's winded like a two-pack-a-day smoker. I don't know why she likes to dance. She's so out of shape. And Peter? Peter? No, of course I don't love him. He's like 18 or something. There's just nothing there yet. Then why do you care? Because he's mine. He ain't yours anymore. Nothing on earth anyway. He's mine. Maybe he was yours once upon a time. But you can't so much as touch him now. Olivia can. She can stick her tongue in his mouth. Look, she is rubbing him. That little slut. Peter, can't you see what a stupid horse she is? Laugh at her. There was a time when I'd only have to glance at her and she'd skulk back to her rightful slutty place. But now there's nothing left of me. Nothing. Nada. All that's left is here and now. You can have that owl painting if you like. The letter opener? <laughs> you could have me. You could have me forever. Great. Just what I need. I'm sure you would call me your muse. I'm sure Joseph would call me darling. You two know too much about me. You know how rotten I am. Your Peter? He knew nothing. He was a blank slate. Come on, Peter. Think of me. Save me. We've laughed at Olivia together. Look how stupid she looks. Get your hands off him, you bitch! Come on, Peter. Don't let her coax you. Good. Now they're dancing. She's such a white girl. No rhythm. What an idiot she is. Don't. The song's over. And now they're... What's that? Poor dear Vaughn. <laughs> you didn't give a damn when I died. You didn't even cry. Great. Now she's telling him all about me. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Can you believe that? She told him everything. William, baby, everything. Did you know that Yvonne, he didn't even look all that surprised, that bastard. You can have him, Olivia. Him and his perfect body and his trust fund. Poor Yvonne. Dance, dance, dance. Poor Yvonne. I'll pour Yvonne them. Something's happening. I'm drifting away. I can barely hear the music anymore. I can't see them. That's it. They're gone. No more Earth. Joseph, please don't turn away. Can't you hold me for a second? Yeah, Joseph. Let Eileen hold you. Please? Come on, you're a man. I'm sure my body at least interests you. I mean, you could bounce a quarter off my ass. A man more or less killed himself over it, after all. I mean, if you have to look at something in this god-awful place, I'm certainly better looking than the furniture. So come on, I'm yours to do what you want with, and to love, if you wish. Let Eileen hold you. She'd be more appreciative. But she's a chick. She doesn't count. I don't count. <laughs> Perhaps we started badly.
Don't you see that I have a special place in my heart just for you? I'll protect you from his dirty mitts forever and ever. You won't ever have to be afraid again. And I'll be your mirror as much as you want. No, oh, please, spare me. I'm just not interested. Hello. I'm straight, even if it means no Nikki in the afterlife. But you can be my muse, my darling. <laughs> your darling. But don't make me laugh. Even if you did love me, which would be impossible. Even if I was gay, which I so am not. Don't you see? I can't love you back. I killed my own baby. There's nothing left in here for anyone. I'm a hollow shell. All I have is my body. And it's not for you. But don't you see, I don't care. I don't care if you're a muse or a monster. Be who you are. Just be with me. Will you leave me alone? What can I do to hear? Oh. You'll pay for this, Joseph. So, you need a man, huh? Not any man. You. Whatever. Any man would suffice just about now. But since I'm the only one in the room, mind you, I'm not really your type. I'm not some young fool, and I hate swing dancing, and raves, and anything that has to do with trendy little idiots spending their parents' money. You'll do just fine. And if I need anything different, I'll just change you. <laughs> That's typical. You couldn't change me if you tried. Ah, oh, and we were so close. Close to what? To a genuine fabrication of near attraction. Huh. Well, you'll come around. Guys always need sex sooner or later. I'll just sit here until you're done thinking about things. That's it. Fawn over him like the silly bitch you are. It's like you're waiting for table scraps. He's not even good looking. Don't listen to her. She doesn't know what she's talking about. I think you're very handsome. I can't promise you much, Yvonne. I can't love you. I know you too well. But you still want me? Yes. That's all I need. Well, then... Who cares? I mean, it's not like we can get rid of you or go into the other room. Do you care? Not in the least. But you can't, you can't! No one is telling you to watch. Get your filthy man hands off her! Get off me, you fucking dyke! Don't think I won't smack you, because I will! You son of a good hover, you promised! What did I ever promise? You promised to shut the fuck up when we first came here, and did you? No. All right. Have it your way, stud. Obviously in the minority here. And I'll be standing by, watching. When you're kissing her, Joseph, my eyes will bore into you. When you put it in, I'll be there. Go ahead, you two. Fuck away. I'll have my revenge soon enough. We're in hell, after all. <laughs> yeah. Where were we? Please, don't mind that jealous little bitch. No, it's not just her. Tommy is talking with the boys again at the cafe. It's winter. It's already been six months. And they're talking about me. Is this gonna last long? I mean, at least tell me what they're saying. Nothing. He's just proving to me that he is the backstabbing worm I always thought he was. Bastard. What about me? Do you think you can love me? Not if you keep getting distracted. Will you trust me? 
trust you? How quaint. Trust you for what? It's not like you're gonna run off with Eileen over there. I was thinking of a different kind of trust. Shut up, Tommy. Shut up, you asshole. I can't even defend myself down there. You must trust me. What's your problem? Can't we keep it simple? I've given you my body, now I have to give you my trust. I don't think I have any left, dear Joseph. But you better be careful. Your conscience is slipping. What happened down there anyways? They shot me. I know. The rebels turned on you. You're an American. A prime target. Big deal. That's only part of the story. That bastard down there was making a pretty good case against me. But he wasn't there. He didn't know how I felt. It's just that I couldn't kill anybody, no matter how angry I was. So I quit the rebellion. One person's rebel is another's terrorist. What do you want me to say? Don't you get it, Precious? He was shot for being a coward. When did you decide to quit the so-called rebellion, Joseph? In the middle of a firefight, did you turn tail and run? Hey, if the guy didn't want to shoot anyone, I can understand that. More like he didn't want to get shot. It was worse than that. The Serbs were killing women and children right in front of us. I couldn't watch. I couldn't fight. I was afraid. But you have to understand we were greatly outnumbered. Does that really make me a coward, Yvonne? How should I know? Don't be so unreasonable. I wasn't there, but it sounds scary to me too. I mean, only you know for sure if you're a coward. But I've heard even heroes are afraid. They're also dead. But so are you. So I guess being a coward didn't work in your favor this time, did it, Joseph? You're such a cunt, Eileen. Is it cowardice though to logically think through a situation and realize that no good is going to come of supposed heroism? If I stood up from the bush where I was hiding and suddenly started firing away at the Serbs, do you think any of those women and children would have survived? I don't think so. And I would have surely been dead, as well as my comrades who were with me. They shot me in the back as I ran away, and then they all got killed as well. So much for heroism. Come here, Yvonne. I want you close by as that bastard on earth badmouths me. Your eyes are soothing. Your eyes are soothing. Listen to that bullshit. How do you like cowards, Precious? Quit calling me Precious. I don't give a damn if he's a coward or General fucking MacArthur, as long as he can make me come. Look at them huddled over their coffees, staring at the steam, and thinking, Joe was a coward. Totally casual. You know, Joe acted cowardly. Pretty soon, whenever anybody's afraid, they'll call him a Joe coward. You two are lucky. The world doesn't give you a second thought, but they're just not letting me go down there. What about wifey Pooh? She's dead. Died just now, about a month ago. <laughs> Brief, I'm sure. Correct. But it's all right. The war's over. The wifey Pooh is dead. And I've carved out for myself a pretty little chapter of journalistic history. Come on, Joseph. It's all right. Don't. They're there. It's all right. Those jerks will be dead soon anyways. And I bet they get a room right next door. Think of better things. Think of me. But I want them to stop thinking. Thinking of me. Sure, they'll die soon, but my death will forever be recorded as that of a coward who abandoned women and children to their deaths. Stop it. You think too much. You could help me. Look, people lay out history any way they want to, and they usually screw it up. If just one person knows the truth, that I was acting out of logic, that I was trying to save myself for the good of the war effort, if you can believe that, 
Maybe that's enough. Maybe we could even come to love each other. We could try. Yvonne, will you try? <laughs> Yvonne, will you try with me? God, you're unreal. Do you really think I could love a coward like you? <laughs> but you said as long as- I'm kidding. Of course I'll try. You really look nothing like a coward. You have the face of a hero and the ass of a prince. <laughs> How could I not fall for you? I can never tell when you're putting me on. Do you mean it? Cross my heart. <laughs> and to hell with those assholes in Kosovo. We have each other. <laughs> God, you're tedious. What the hell's so funny? I can't believe how gullible you are. Little precious here doesn't mean a word of what she's saying to you. God, you are a dork. She knows you're a coward. She just doesn't care. <laughs> Don't listen to her. I'll trust you if you trust me. Oh, you are so transparent, Yvonne. All you want is a man around. Maybe get a little action. You tell him he was God if you thought it would keep him here. <laughs> Don't tell me. Is she right? Yvonne? What do you want me to say, Joseph? Why do you have to keep analyzing everything? Coward or not, I'm going to have faith in you. Isn't that enough? You two make me want to puke. <laughs> Where are you going? Out. Like you can just walk out of here. Don't worry, Precious. He's not going anywhere. They better open this goddamn door. I can't take you two anymore. Joseph! I've never been so revolted in my life. Fuck away from me. You're more fucked up than she is. Just your touch makes me want to wretch. You're putrefying. You can't leave me here with her. I won't say anything. I don't think you're a coward. I can have faith in you. Just, just don't leave me with that, that whore. Whore? Look who's talking. You're on your own, precious. Don't you call me that. Coward! Coward! <laughs> How's my precious feeling now? You spat in my face, but I forgive you. You're scared. But he's going to leave, and I can take care of you. Everything's going to be all right. Nothing's ever going to be all right. If that door opens, I'm out of here too. Oh, yeah? And where are you going to go? Where in hell are you going to go? Far away from you. Let me out, you bastards. Anything. I'll take anything. Lakes of fire, evisceration, castration, anything. As long as I don't have to endure an eternity with these horrible, fucked up females. Come on, give me your best shot. Rip out my eyes, flay my skin. I don't care. Get me out of here. That was unexpected. Well, Mr. Man, take off. You're free. Now, why did that open? Come on, bravery man, head on out. No. And you, Precious? The door's open. Time's a-wastin'. <laughs> well, anyone? The door's open. Who's first? No? <laughs> what a predicament. It's a real scream, huh? Look how inseparable we are now. <laughs> inseparable, huh? Come on, Joe. No! Help me push her out of here. We'll slam the door no! her face! Let her go. What? She despises you. It's because of her that I'm gonna stay. Because of me? Well, don't just stand there. Are you raised in a barn? Shut the door, the heat's getting in. All right, Joseph. What's this about? I was just thinking. I mean, you know everything that there is to know about being a coward, don't yes. you? Yes. You know what it's like to be a wretched, fearful misanthrope who despises herself as much as she despises everyone else. And on top of that, you're a coward. That's how you knew my game. So it's you I have to convince. You're right there in my league. I can't leave you here gloating over my defeat. You really think you can convince me? I have to convince you. There's nothing left for me on Earth anymore. I'm not even remembered as that coward anymore. 
nothing. All I have is you. It's you that matters, not Yvonne. If I can just make you have faith in me, then I'll be saved. Fat fucking chance. I have eternity to convince you. I suppose so. I'll really be convinced you're hero if you can find me a light. Look, I never cared about anything but the moment. Love and money meant shit to me. I wanted action, and I risked my life trying to find it. How could I possibly have been a coward down there? It was all a fantasy, Joseph. As long as there was no threat of real danger, you were fine. The moment you were confronted with true mortality, you turned and ran like a scared child. That's not true. Just by associating with the rebels, I risked my life. I could have helped them if they'd given me a chance. I died too soon. I wasn't allowed to prove my bravery. Listen to yourself. Everybody dies too soon, too late. But when that moment comes, when you die, your life is added up, no matter what potential it did or didn't live up to. And that's it. You are your life and nothing more. How come you have to be such a bitch all the time? You have a smart answer for everything. Come now. You knew I wasn't going to be an easy target. I'll just sit right here. Wait while you think up some more arguments. God, you're going to pay. You are such a coward. Nothing but a cowardly coward. <laughs> Ooh, look at that seething stare. <laughs> Don't you want to choke the life out of me? See how weak I am? <laughs> no? But that's right. If you throttle me, you won't be able to convince me. Nothing more cowardly than throttling a weak, helpless woman. Don't let her talk to you. Ah, ah, clock the bitch! I can't do that. Then kiss me. She hates that. That I can do. But you can't, you can't! Coward! Coward! Stop it! Running to women for solace! Wheel him in, little piggy. God, how can you let him touch you? Oh! God, I want you to fuck me. Fuck me right in front of that nasty gut. That's right, go ahead. Fuck the little slut. And I'll be watching you over and over again. I hope you can get it up, cowardly coward! I sure hope you can, you... Coward. Here, help me take my shirt off. My, my, my. What a lovely pair. Cowardly coward and the slutty baby killer. Ha <laughs> ha. Will Joseph be able to maintain an erection and slam the infanticide of rich bitch? Ha <laughs> ha. Place your bets, folks. The crowd isn't so sure. Can't you hear them whispering, Joseph? Coward. Coward with a limp dick. Coward. Coward. <laughs> Come on, I'm waiting. Drop trow, big boy. Slide it on home, just like the slut tells you to. Will this never end? Never. Stop looking at me. Never. I'm really starting to get it now. This picture is beautiful. They've thought of everything. So this is hell. I never imagined it could be so horrible. They always said it was demons dumping you in a lava pit. What a bunch of bullshit. They don't need the torture chamber. Hell is... Hell is other people. Come on, Joseph. Please, get away from me. I can't do anything with her watching all the time. Then I'll stop her from watching. <laughs> <laughs> you little moron. What do you think you're doing? I'm already dead. Already dead? Dead. See, honey? <laughs> it's all the same. <laughs> we could go on trying to murder one another forever. We're stuck here together. Forever. <laughs> forever? <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
So, there now. Where shall we start? The harder they come, the harder they fall. Don't give a damn, fuck them all. Just trying to keep myself from turning up blue. But I guess she'll get you, she'll get used to looking at you. Out of the frying pan, into the fire. All things said and done, I would have thought I read it higher. I'm just gonna sit here and come unglued. Sitting here, sitting here, just looking at you. You're what I like to call. People say that I talk funny That's one thing I know that you would never do And I can show you you Show you used to looking at you Show you used to looking at you Show That's what I'm gonna see if I didn't do. Ha! Uh -huh. 